Hello. So, as I mentioned to you when I last saw you, I'm going to do a little video to show you how I would approach the rest of the comprehension questions. Um, now, this video is not pre-prepared, so there will be a lot of awkward pauses and such like. So, just think of it as one, as one of my usual tutoring sessions. Okay, so from memory, we were up to question 16. So, if you would like to have a go at question 16 to 19 before I go through it, um, you can pause the video and have a go. Okay, now I've already gone right past the page. So... It says up here, in turning, a Tyrannosaurus would have been hampered by what? Its weight, its bulky leg muscles, its overall size, its tail length, all of the above. So, I would very quickly scan the text to look for a synonym or the same word as turning. So, I'm going to have a quick look through. <laughs> Turn, here we go. All right, unlike some of the predators of today's African savanna, which can change direction almost immediately, the dinosaur would have had to turn slowly or risk stumbling over. Um, it would have been hampered by its long tail. So we can very quickly go back to that question and select. Oh, I skipped question 16. I'll come back to that in a second. For question 17, its tail length. Okay, being known as the Ferrari of dinosaurs means Tyrannosaurus rex. Now let's have a look through. There's one we can cross out immediately, which is war shoes. Okay, so we can also use a bit of uh, common sense here because if they're using a metaphor, Ferrari of dinosaurs, uh, we got to think of qualities of a Ferrari. Was a Ferrari as... A hunting machine is a Ferrari ferocious. Ferraris, the car, are probably quick and agile. So let's have a look at the text now. All right. So far from being the Ferrari of dinosaurs, okay, so, and yes, we just learned from that turning question that the Tyrannosaurus rex is not quick and agile, so he's far from being quick and agile. So the answer, therefore, for question 16 would be, was a quick and agile creature. So for that one, we first of all used a bit of our common sense to think about what a Ferrari is. Okay, being, you know, the fast car. And then we checked it in the text by looking up this particular quote. In 17, we used keywords. We were actually able to find turn, and also we were able to find the word hamper, which isn't always the case. Sometimes they use synonyms for keywords. All right, in calculating the size, speed, and agility of Tyrannosaurus rex, scientists use... Um, now, remember, this is size, speed, and agility. We want to look for, and in this case, we choose the keywords from down here... Fossils, biomechanical calculations, computer models, and comparisons with modern animals. Okay, and we want to head up to where they look at size, speed, and agility. All right. Well, I very quickly found speed and agility. It's right here. It says here, oh, and it's right here as well. Um, so it says here... They reached, after using computer modeling and biomechanical, biomechanical calculations, um, based the calculations on me uh, measurements taken from a fossil dinosaur. So, so it's both the computer modeling and the biomechanical calculations and the fossil. So that would be A and B together. So we would select this answer here. The overall theme of the passage is, now, the beauty of already having done all these questions about the passage, even though we haven't read the passage, we should know a little bit about the theme. Um, we can have a look at some of these. Uh, because it was cumbersome, Tyrannosaurus rex was lucky to survive. We know cumbersome. I haven't seen anything about this half. Um, its speed and agility were superior to those of other dinosaurs. I can cross that out straight away. His fierce reputation is now laid to rest. I haven't read anything about that. 
Um, compared to modern predatory animals, Tyrannosaurus rex was slow and cumbersome. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to check the, um, the top sentence. Um, among predatory dinosaurs, few flesh eaters were bigger, faster, and nastier than the tyrant lizard of popular imagine, imagination, sorry, the Tyrannosaurus rex. At least that's what we have been led to believe. Okay, so it's obviously going to tell us differently. Um, and here it does talk about modern animals. And here again, it also talks about the predators of today's African savanna. So there's actually quite a few mentions in here of modern animals. Um, where are we? Okay. So that's pretty much where you'd find the information for that one. So going back to this question, sorry for the lag, but when I'm recording the screen for some reason, everything slows down. Um, we did establish it was cumbersome, but there was nothing there about it being lucky to survive. B's definitely wrong, C's wrong. So we can go compared to modern predatory animals. The Tyrannosaurus rex was slow and cumbersome. Okay, so let's have a look at the next section, questions 20 to 23. So we go straight down here. Anne does not believe it is Mr. Elliot who Mary sees from the window because why? So we want to find a section where she does not believe it's Mr. Elliot. And from our scanning, we can find it here. It cannot be Mr. Elliot, I assure you. He was to leave Bath at nine this morning and does not come back till tomorrow. So from our scanning, um, Anne does not believe it is Mr. Elliot because Mr. Elliot was to have left Bath earlier that day. Question 20B. All right, question 21. Anne obviously knows Mr. Elliot quite well for all the following reasons except. Now, this is one of those questions where we want to look up these reasons in the text, um, cross them out and find out which one isn't mentioned. Now, we've already seen that she has knowledge of his travel plans, so we can cross that one out straight away. Hmm, she shows discomfort at Mary spotting him. Let's have a look. Does she? Um, as she spoke, she felt that Captain Wentworth was looking at her uh, and then she regretted that she'd said so much. Um, says she was vexed and embarrassed. So maybe we could say that that one is evident. Um, she is sensitive to what the other ladies might know. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Scanning very quickly, hopefully. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, this one's taking me a bit long, isn't it? Ah, her distress returned, however, on perceiving smiles and intelligent glasses, glances passed between two or three of the lady visitors. So, if we go back to our question. Where are we? She is sensitive about the other ladies. What are they smiling about? Um, Mary, sorry, she had been speaking about Mr. Elliot to others in the room. I assure you. By the fact that she was embarrassed of having said too much, maybe suggests she wasn't talking about Mr. Elliot, but um, there is no evidence in the text that she was talking about Mr. Elliot previously. Mary refers to Anne meeting Mr. Elliot in Lyme. Oh, not know Mr. Elliot indeed. You do seem to have forgotten all about Lyme. We can spot that one by looking up the keyword Lyme. So the one that isn't mentioned is um, D. Now, those sorts of exercises, they can actually be quite con uh, time consuming because you do need to check what is in the text and what isn't. Anne finally goes to the window because um, she knows in her heart it really is Mr. Elliot. We're going to skip those answers for a second. Let's find out why she goes to the window. 
All right. To pacify Mary and perhaps screen her own embarrassment, Anne did move quietly to the window. So you'd be looking for the keywords move and window or synonyms. And why did she do it? To pacify Mary and perhaps screen her own embarrassment. So screen means to cover up her embarrassment. Pacify, you may not know, but if you think of um, pacifists or pacifiers that babies suck on, what do they do? Keeps them calm. Pacifists are calm. Pacifiers keep babies calm. So she finally goes to the window because she wishes to calm Mary and cover up her lack of composure. That's how we would figure that one out. From what occurs, it can be inferred that Anne uh, couldn't care less about Mr. Elliot. We can cross that one out. Had not known Mr. Elliot long enough to recognise him. She obviously knows him pretty well because she knows all about um, his travel plans. Um, is uncomfortable at Mr. Elliot's behaviour, is attracted to Mr. Elliot. Um, by the way that she kind of gets embarrassed, which is things that we've um, we've read about, I think that perhaps she is attracted to Mr. Elliot. Also, she does seem to be uncomfortable at his behaviour because it contradicts what she knew about his travel plans. So the answer here is C and D together. Um, and that information can be gathered from what we've scanned already. We shouldn't have to read any more.